Morning boys and girls. Uh, I have my hood on because I parked my car outside last night and it's 21 degrees out. Um, so I'm waiting for my heat to kick in and uh, also my camera may move a little bit because my hands were so cold that I couldn't quite tighten down the suction cup now. But uh, it's another morning, I guess an evening for you guys because I upload on Thursdays at 5 usually. But today we're going to talk about transmissions because transmissions are a fun topic and uh, there's a lot of debate going around online about this ZF8 speed that's appearing in pretty much every car. So. Uh, if you didn't know, before the SQ5, I had the S4, so a pretty good sample in that the S4 had DSG made it to this 3.0 uh, supercharged six-cylinder. I'll take my hood off now. Um, and the SQ5 has this ZF8 speed made it to the 3.0 supercharged six-cylinder. Now, uh, I've spent a fair amount of time in both, uh, about 40,000 miles in my S4 and just coming up on 10,000 miles in this car, and uh, I can tell you that Overall, I think the ZF's better, uh, and I can totally understand why manufacturers are moving that way. I'm going to adjust the exposure here a little bit, and also we're slowly getting more crooked as this silly camera decides to shift because I can't tighten it down anymore. Anyway, um, so where does the DSG outperform the ZF? You could argue on track, maybe. Um, I think the ZF is as good as the DSG uh, as far as shift speed goes, as far as smoothness goes. Maybe the DSG downshifts are a little more smooth um, just because there's a clutch involved, but I think for my purpose, which is definitely not tracking because I have a mom car, um, the ZF8 speed makes a lot more sense. I think the first aspect of it is obviously the fact that it's a torque converter automatic instead of a dual clutch. Now, you hardcore dual clutch lovers are gonna hate me for saying that, but I think the torque converter makes a lot more sense in like 95 to 98% of the context. Uh, let me give you an example. If you're driving in traffic in your DSG car, uh, we'll take the S4 for example, because that's what I know. Um, the S4 would hold second gear until you came to a dead stop. So if you rolled in traffic at like five miles an hour, it was sitting there in second gear, you could feel it riding the clutch. It definitely wasn't the greatest thing for the transmission. And it was also kind of jerky. You know, if you got into the gas too hard, it would engage too quickly and you get kind of a little whiplash effect, I guess, for lack of a better term. Now, with the SQ5, with the torque converter, Please that allows slip, kind of like, oh, we're going through a tunnel, sorry. Uh, that allows slip, kind of like the S4 was slipping the clutch, but instead it's, it's the transmission is literally designed to do that. Um, and so what that slip allows you to get is a much more smooth engagement rolling from a stop. You know, five miles an hour in traffic, we're going four right now. It says my car is still in second. You can hear it slip the clutch. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. Oh, we're crooked again. I'm not sure if you guys could hear it but it, it slips the clutch, in, or it slips the torque converter, I should say. Instead of just trying to either slip the clutch or engage really quick it, with that kind of jerky motion, and that's something that really bothered me about the S4, because if you tried to manually downshift to first underneath, I don't know, five miles an hour, even 10 miles an hour, it gave you, it gave you a weird, like, clunking feeling, which was awful and felt like you were breaking the transmission. Um, the second reason is reliability. I haven't heard of anyone having any issues with the ZF, knock on wood, uh, compared to the DSG where you have to deal with mechatronics failure, or mechatronics, mechatronics, one of the two. It's been a minute. Um, where you have to deal with mech... 12 minutes, Jensen, 36, Blades Road. have to deal with mechatronics failure, uh, there's clutch slippage. Uh, my buddy who has an S4 just had his entire transmission replaced on a bone stock car with 26,000 miles because the clutch was slipping. You don't hear about that with the ZFs. Um, they're, they're much, much more reliable. There's no clutch to overheat on the track or, or you know, from doing a burnout or whatever. And I think just overall the, the ZF makes much more sense. And that's why you see them in the Hellcat, you see them in the RS7, you see them in the RS6, the new RS6. Uh, even the new Supra has a, a ZF 8-speed. Um, now, obviously there is something to be said for a traditional manual transmission, but if we're talking automatics in this day and age with the advancements that the torque converter has made, 
I just don't think it makes sense to have a dual clutch anymore. Um, I guess you could argue in like, oh, we're crooked. I guess you could argue in like super high performance context, maybe it makes sense, but I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sold on this ZF. We're literally leaning as we go around this turn. I'm turning to the left and I can see my camera just drooping down. I feel like what happens is people who haven't driven an automatic since like the 2003 days. Where I, I had a 2003 Volkswagen Passat V6 automatic. That transmission was hot garbage. You put it in uh, manual mode and you went to downshift and it was like, it thought about it, it thought about it, and then instead of rev matching like this one does, it kind of slipped the torque converter. I don't even know. Oh, we're going the, we're turning the right way this time. Um, but those were horrible and, and you can't see me. Those were horrible and I totally agree with anybody who's gonna say, you know, early 2000s cars were better in manual than stick, absolutely. But what happens is people who haven't driven automatic since those early cars are like, yeah, the ZF's awful, there's no way a torque converter automatic could be any good, blah, blah, blah. Listen to... Like, it's so smooth, it rev matches itself. Listen to how fast it upshifts. That's fast. My buddy who drove it last night, who has a Mark 7 GTI, shout out Dills. Um, if you're an OG, you remember him from our GTI mods video that's very cringy. Um, but uh, he drove this last night, he goes, it shifts as fast as a GSG. Um, Jesus, this is a mess, guys. I'm an unprofessional filmmaker. I take seven weeks off, come back from one video, and suddenly I don't know how to mount a camera anymore. The only argument that you could really make is that the ZF is not as tunable as the DSG right now. There's a lot of different, it, it seems like, coding barriers for the ZF. Wow, I'm out of focus, there we go. There's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different coding barriers for the ZF compared to the DSG where, you know, everybody and their brother has a, a DSG tune to offer, but not everybody has a ZF tune. Uh, and I think that, I think it's because of something to do with the transmission and uh, the coding and the computer in there and just, all that fun stuff. So I guess that's really the only downside. It seems like the dual clutches are a little easier to crack and that ZF has put their own uh, their own secret sauce in the coating to unlock the transmission. So if you haven't driven a ZF car before you go online and complain about how bad it is and why it should have come with a dual clutch or it should have come with a manual, which again, you can't really make the argument of manual versus ZF. Um, they're totally different driving experiences, but if you haven't driven a, a ZF car and you're complaining about cars that are coming with ZFs instead of dual clutches, do yourself a favor, drive one. You realize that they're not that bad. That is all for now. Thank you guys for watching. Go out there and spread some positivity. And I will catch you guys in the next video.